Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. You know, I, I love doing this program because it's a, it's a sense of positivity. Uh, you know, I look at things in the news and what people are talking about with a positive viewpoint. What's going on in our world and, and why we can share that together and learn something from it and grow. I got a great topic today and a great guest. Uh, everything is about relationships in life. Let's face it, relationships. I mean, whether they're personal or business, whatever they happen to be, but it's how we get along, how we talk to people, how we relate to one another, how we relate to ourselves. Relationships. And I've got a relationship expert. This is Susan Winter. I want you to say hi to her. She looks fabulous on camera. <laughs> She's you. a terrific human being. Oh, thank you. And it's so good to have you here, Susan. We go back a long way. We're good friends. Yes, yes Ernie. I'm yeah. very lucky to call you a friend. Oh, aren't you sweet? Same, same here, because, you know, you are a, a professional, but you're also a very decent and, and real human being. Uh, and, and that says that. a lot about a person. You can be really good at what you do, you know, whatever your career happens to be, but you're also a good person, and I, I admire you for that. I thank you so much coming from you because I have the same admiration for you. You know, it's interesting. As a human being in relationships, you can only bring to that relationship who and what you stand for. Mm. And the level of interaction has to do with your authenticity, your integrity, your character. That's the real proof of who you are as a human being. And I was talking with some people mm -hmm. yesterday in sales. Sales, yeah. yeah. And they were talking about, they don't go after the sale per se. They connect with that person. Mm. Listen to them. What mm -hmm. do they want? What are they looking for? Try to help them, give there them options. And they're wildly successful because it's not about the goal of the money. It's sure. about connecting mm -hmm. and serving a need that that person well, has. Well, you, you know, it, it's looking beyond. Exactly. And, and saying, okay, we're talking about sales, advertising, whatever it happens to be. Uh, it could be anything. But you're looking at why. Wh the what's why. What's behind it? The why. Well, why are you doing it? Are you trying to help people? What's your service? What does it provide? Uh, what's the emotion behind all of this? Because that's what people buy into, emotion. You know a lot about emotions. <laughs> and I want to talk about relationships. Okay. And we're going to start with personal. Okay. Okay, because that's personal, probably, romantic, uh, familial, a, a, a bunch of things. Okay. Let, let's start with okay. romantic. Okay, because okay, that's okay. probably you know everybody says, yeah, hey, I want to hear more <laughs> about. There's so much going on, Susan. You know, online dating. There are scams. All I know. kinds of things going. On. Bring us up to date on romantic relationships. What we should know and what's going on. Okay, this is my eye roll. Okay, <laughs> how can I do this and summarize it? Um, things have changed dramatically. If you find yourself entering the dating market after having been married 20 years, just fasten that seatbelt because mm. it's a whole new ballgame. Mm. The way we used to interact, there were rules and structures in place. Uh, somebody would chase you down to have a relationship, possibly to be married. We have to think now that that is all a flutter. And Why? it's all the, uh, the structure's been broken in order to have greater freedom. Oftentimes, mm. In evolution, you will find that the society will eradicate the existing structure, but you better have an infrastructure in place. Mm, you right. can't leave it, otherwise it's right. chaos. And mm -hmm. we've had chaos. The millennials have brought us wonderful new advancements in technology and startup True. companies. Yep. And at the same time, they introduced the, how do I say it, separation of relationship mm -hmm. from sexuality. Yeah, plus and minus. So now yeah. there's no safety net. And sure. it became hookup culture, which mm. I work mostly with millennials. I have all age groups, 18 to 80. But mm -hmm. the emotional trauma from the human being integrated, having an experience yeah. where they're dishonored and thrown away and discarded and ghosted and things like that, lied to that has had a lot of um, negative impact. So people are now much more mm, skeptical, mm. Uh, jaded when they enter relationships. And we have to fight against that and do just the opposite. Okay, well, help us out. Okay, if we have a little bit of a chaotic situation here, how do we settle it down? How do we, how do we filter through this and say, okay, let me see how I can make my relationship work? Look, it, honest assessment yeah. of your part in it, because yeah. it's so easy to just blame them, right? Oh, sure. So um, we have to look at 
for every action, there's a reaction. And it's kind of like if you shift your position, mm -hmm. oftentimes your partner has to shift theirs. A very sophisticated Susan Winter version of the, you know, teeter-totter. Mm -hmm. If you have different weights. Yeah. But it happens right. in a relationship. Exactly. It yeah. happens in a relationship. So right. you make a move that's slightly different because whatever you've been doing has not been working. Mm -hmm. Your partner will correspond. They have to respond differently. Yeah. It's different input. Yeah. Yeah. And then secondarily, get very clear about what the issue is because you don't attack the person. You deal with the issue. And I suggest negotiating together as a couple trying to find an answer mm -hmm. to this thing as though you're business partners. Yeah. We've got this issue. What do you think we should do about mm -hmm. it? And you know what, Susan? I, I, I know you're going to agree with me uh, in terms of relationships. Um, whether it's the romantic or whether it's uh, you're, you're being a family person, talking to my kids. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I find very important, and that is when you're going to have a discussion about specifics and you're trying to find a solution, the one thing that I like to say at the very beginning is, I love you. I want you to know that what we're talking about is out of love. I want this to work. I want you to be happy. I want to be happy. This is a, a, a foundation of love. So let's understand one another that there's nothing here other than trying to help one another and find solutions. How did you come upon that? Well, experience. And yeah, growth, but that's family. That's like so bedrock. Mm. And it sounds so basic. And it's worked. Of course it it's works worked. because there's no defensiveness. Right. Because they know their love. Now they know you're in it together. You're working as exactly. a team to make something better in their lives. Yes. That's the way mm. that you go from arguing to negotiating mm. and, and problem solving together. Yeah, I like this idea. So we're going to jump around a little because there's so much to cover. <laughs> okay, there's a okay. lot in relationships. Yeah, so you're I talking know. about relationships, mm -hmm. millennials to all the way into the 80s and mm -hmm. so on. Um, okay, so older couples, okay, people who have lost someone, yeah. uh, people who have divorced, yeah. people who are looking for the second time around. Uh, how is that relationship situation working out? What do they need to know about? The big pro and a big con. Uh -huh. Okay, big pro, they've had relationships. They know the terrain. They've been in committed relationships. They know what it takes to have one, and they come in with a very clear mindset. They, yeah. And you, when you're older, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. And you're not trying to please somebody else. This is like basically who I am. Right. That clarity Honesty. is brilliant. Yeah. Okay, plus the history. Yep. Yeah. Con. Dwindling numbers. Mm. Not everybody. You've got a lot of women that are in great shape. Mm -hmm. They look 20 years younger than their age, mm. and they're supposed to be with men 5 to 15 years older. Those guys are all you know, dead. Not everybody's healthy. So oftentimes you have a dwindling prospective pool of partners. That's where you have to think outside the box. And whatever your image was of what they have to be, you need to open up your mind and say, send me the best. Okay, listen, mm -hmm. I just... I want to find the person that's right for me. Let me listen with my heart and listen to what they're saying and kind of get rid of maybe age, maybe color, maybe background. Mm. Are, are you saying, you know, in a general statement, don't be so choosy, don't be so picky, be realistic, be understanding? I would frame it as be open. Be open. Okay. That's, yeah. a, that's a good way to put it. Be open. Be open to being surprised. Yeah. Sometimes your perfect match comes in a box you never expected. Mm. Mm -hmm. Open up your mind to the wild card. It yeah. might be perfect for you. I like that. There are a lot of scams, okay? <laughs> we report <laughs> oh, that on the God. news. We know that I these know, stories I are know, out there. I know. So many scams, and, and it bothers I, me because I, I say, you know, if people would only spend that amount of time on something good. I know. You know, instead of, you know, trying to uh, do all of these terrible things to people. So what do we watch out for when it comes to scams? If it's too good to be true, love too soon, the person doesn't know you, but they're wild about you, mm. you've got to really check yourself. Would we love to believe that this incredibly gorgeous person just thinks we're amazing, we've never met, and they're professing love and giving us everything we want? That's not realistic. Mm. Also, if you can't physically meet them in about two weeks... With AI, it's going to get harder. You yeah. can have a Zoom call with this person. Mm -hmm. In the past, you couldn't. They're like, oh, my phone doesn't work, and I've got an issue. They could lie to you. Now, you don't know because you can be talking to an AI. Susan, AI is, oh, is changing I know. the world. I know. And changing everything about it. 
So we're going to have to be really careful in watching the influence that AI is going to have on, on dating and relationships. Well, AI can't yet meet us in person for coffee. Mm. Right, right. So I think we're covered there. But all this, you know, I'm working on an oil rig in the outside of Istanbul. Yeah, I mean, right, right. my girlfriend fell for that. I'm like, mm. I know a little bit about really? this. Happened to her? I, I happen to know about the energy business. Oh. It's like, that doesn't happen. They don't have internet there. Mm. Also, they use AI <laughs> they use kind of some bad AI, like a chat GPT, to create um, a response to you. And you'll notice it's a team of people. It's not one person. You're on a leaderboard and what you yeah, like and your yeah, dog and yeah, all this. Yeah. And you'll suddenly get a, good morning. A morning is a wonderful time to have a great breakfast. You're going like, where is this coming from? Yeah, insane. It really is. Well, we're going to have to watch for all of this. So now let's assume that you get into a good relationship. Okay, wonderful. And you're happy with yeah. the relationship. yeah. yeah. Now, how do we maintain it? What do we do to preserve that relationship, to help it grow and, and nurture it so that it really blossoms and, and stays for a long time? Well, Ernie, what have you done? Same thing. You, nurture you've it. put in the time, put in the energy. So don't, don't so walk many, away. So many people think their job is done once they've captured the person. Like, okay, yeah. I got her, I've got him. Now I can just, that is checked off my list and now I go on. Sure. And, it is ongoing growth. We need to grow independently to be interesting and dynamic to our partner. Mm -hmm. And our partner should not be frightened by a new hobby or a new, I don't know, something that we take on to expand ourselves. And so it's like this, the DNA strand. It's, it, yeah. you, you grow independently, you grow together. You, you just used the word open before. Open. Yes, yes. Right? So you have to be open to all these things, all these new ways, ideas, and so forth, and try it. And two, you always need to look at your partner with fresh eyes. You know, yeah. 20 years, you look at them across from a kitchen table, you know exactly what they're going to say oh, to you. Yeah, you know yeah. what they're going to do. Yeah. You know, by the way, they drop the spoon, what they're feeling. We have to constantly input, as you know, something new and novel. Mm. Sometimes just taking your partner and going, mm -hmm. I need you to pack a weekend bag. Don't yeah. ask any questions. Yeah. This is what we're going to do. And yeah. try things together that shake it up because... Here's the rub. We love relationships because they provide stability and predictability. And it's the same reason why we become bored and discontent. Mm -hmm. Humans need a little bit of fresh, new, different yep. to survive. So you need to keep adding that in, just kind of like a condiment, like a salt mm -hmm. or a pepper yep. into your um, steady diet. I I've used this expression uh, for a lot of different reasons. Consistency with the element of surprise. <laughs> Perfect. Right? Perfect. Be someone that you can depend on. Yep. But at the same time, you know, surprise me. Let me show you something that I want to try. Let me show you something that I want you to try with me. And that's very important. Be consistent. You knew so they that. know who you are, but the element of surprise. Okay. Now we're going to move on. Business relationships and other relationships. There are stories, endless stories about nasty people who have done terrible things to people, uh, whether it's in business and mm -hmm. that sort of relationship, mm -hmm. uh, who are just mean-spirited, uh, who are ready to take from you and steal from you. Um, we have to be very careful about relationships. Someone once said to me, you know, let someone prove themselves to you before you give them your trust. And be careful how you do it, but just be watchful. Uh, many times, you know, if you're too open and if you're too honest and if you're too trusting, you can get in trouble. What do you think about that? Two things. The history books are filled with incredibly successful people that were nasty human beings. Mm. Billionaires who have made a fortune and screwed everybody over. At the end of the day, you and I have chosen a philosophy for the way that we would like to live our lives. For us, not for them. To be the person you would be proud to have met here. Mm. I like to that. be somebody you admire. Mm. And that's your North Star. To be honest, Ernie... All of us at some point, no matter how smart we are, no matter how wise we are to the tricks, uh, we will be fooled, we will be betrayed, we will be let down. Mm -hmm. It's the human condition. But if we allow that to alter how we view life and how we view ourselves, mm -hmm. I'm willing to take some hits to be the person I want to be here. Absolutely. Not to be a fool, yeah. but to understand. And you know what? When you're that kind of person that lives that way... sure. 
they'll try and do what they do, mm-hmm. but there are going to be fewer people that do that to you mm-hmm. because you're not already anticipating it and wanting to be it. You do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a, a friend of mine uh, in, in Chicago years ago who'd say, time heals all wounds and time wounds all heals. Time heals all wounds, and time wounds all heals. <laughs> that's that's and, great. I had to think about that yeah, for a minute. Yeah, you know, and, and he was saying, you know, it, it's a circle. You know, it, it comes around. What goes around comes around. And and I think that that's very true. But, you know, I wish that we could share some of this with children when they're very young. It's been said, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a lamb. And I think it's important to be able to teach our children, because, you know, I, I love kids. I've, I've mm-hmm. written books for children. I have children of my own. Um, and I think that it's important to teach them early in life to really be sensitive, caring, understanding, uh, respectful, honor people, uh, but at the same time to be very careful and to be very uh, wise to what could happen and be sensitive to what is going on and not being so, and I, I did a story once about what would you teach your younger self if mm. you had an opportunity? Mm. What would you have taught yourself? And a lot of people came back and said, I wish I knew that I didn't have to be so trusting. So many mm. people have gotten into trouble because they've trusted and they've been honest and sincere and open mm-hmm. rather than being careful and cautious mm-hmm. before you make a decision weigh the differences, weigh all the options, understand what you're getting into. And I think that's important to teach that to a child because kids can get into a lot of trouble in many different ways, bad habits, as a result of not being... Is this right for me? Is this the truth? It's amazing that we don't teach life Mm -hmm. in school, isn't it? Um, There are countries that do. In Spain, with the new constitution, they had derechos y obligaciones. Mm. They teach children, probably the equivalent of nursery school, first grade, rights and obligations. I have a right as a human being to be respected, independent of my sexual orientation, my religion, Mm -hmm. the color of my skin, how much money my parents make. And I have the obligation to respect you independent of money, status, color, religion, all mm-hmm. that. They're mm-hmm. taught that. Yeah. Yeah. That could be important. I think that's here. wonderful. We I should be doing know. that here. I, and this is not new. I mean, this has been around for years, and I'm just thinking to myself, I don't know what it takes to institute these things, but we know that but we need so them. Susan. I, I mean, know. You know, you know why, why are there so many people who are opposed to you know, teaching something like honesty, uh, and, and, and respect, I mean, in our schools, to, just to teach our kids that these are the fundamentals of life. You're not passing anything else on to them, but these are basic principles to me, and, and I know you agree, yeah. that, that create a good society. I agree. I agree. But they're character traits that we have learned from our parents or we saw or we just admired or we saw the opposite and decided I'm never going to be that. Mm. But a lot of my current rant that I can't even put on YouTube, nobody will click on it. Correct comportment, how to be a polite dater. I mean, nobody's going to click on it. But you think maybe the tide will turn where it has gotten so bad Mm. that people will say, there's got to be a better way. Mm. There's got to be a better movement. We're talking about this, so it's got to be. Yeah. You know, you, you hear the same conversations. I talk to a lot of people in my work, and I hear views and opinions, and I love that because I can learn from that, and I can understand the, the pulse of what's happening right now. So many people, when we're talking, will say to me, you know, Ernie, we live in this age of information. We live in this age of communication. I mean, instant, instant communication. And we talk about everything. Everything is more open now. It's better than it used to be because we can at least talk about whatever it happens to be. And I'm all for it. But at the same time, I don't know why people have become very sensitive about certain things. Like, why are you saying that? And, and here you're saying, say it. And then someone will object to say, but why are you saying that? Do I make any sense here at all? Yeah, I, th- I think that you're kind of bumping up against the woke movement a little bit. But we, we also, listen, if you're going to be open and polite and kind and yeah. ethical, yeah. you need to counter that with resilience because mm. you will be met by the opposite. And we need to teach children and humans how to be resilient within themselves. Mm-hmm. 
to, to life's little nicks and bumps and sometimes hard slaps. You know, life is a, is a learning experience. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and and no, matter, no matter how old you are, you know, there's always something new to learn. And that's why we have to be open. We have to be open to communication. Uh, as a relationship expert, you, you started talking about technology mm -hmm. and AI. Yep. Um, what do you see down the road in terms of what the future looks like as far as us being able to communicate better? Um, what are the tools that are going to help us not work against us? What's going to make a difference? I don't know. For me to project into the future, you know, I would be guessing because I'm not in technology, but like any new movement, there are going to be negatives and positives. If you look at history, people were worried that the television would make us stupid mm -hmm. and people were worried about the radio. Um, it will bring positive and negative. Uh, it will become harder and harder to know what is real and what is true. And that's why as we advance between AI and everything that's coming our way, it's really imperative that we have a code that we have chosen to live by, a philosophy that we believe in so that when we can't trust anything else, mm -hmm. at least we can trust ourselves because mm -hmm. that's where it starts. And humans, in some ways, the greater information, I mean, I listen to podcasts in the manosphere mm -hmm. because I have to. I mean, I, I want to hear what everybody is saying. And there are a lot of men in men's groups now that are struggling to combat the, you know, the ideal masculine guy, kind of impervious to any kind of emotion and always tough and always virile, and then fighting to understand what they're feeling and processing what's happened to them. And so mm. men are going through, there's a lot of open dialogue now and therapy. Everybody's in therapy. Sure. I mean, sure. at least we're and not embarrassed by it either. Oh, yes, you know, I remember. Saying, okay, I have a problem. Yes. Help me out. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, anyway, so I, I think to myself, we're becoming more educated about ourselves. Sure. But at the same time, we need to be more educated as to how to handle each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very important. One yeah. On one. I, I always ask my guests a, a question, and it's one of my favorites because I love children. If you were to pass along some information to a newborn child. Oh, boy. Something that you, you would give it to them and say, here's a little nugget, tuck it away, and at the right time when you can understand, I hope you'll be able to utilize this in your life. With all of your experience as a relationship expert, um, what advice would you pass along to a newborn? Well, a newborn. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, pass if I could, if I could just it. like insert it in their mind? Yeah. They'll save it sometime, and, and they'll use it. Okay, and I want, to say, I want to say this properly, but... Yeah. Nobody attacks the disempowered, mm. meaning when they come after you, you, you know, like when they want to take you down and normally it's a group of people, bullies in school, kids being mean to you, people trying to take what you have or jealous or hateful. They're doing that because you clearly have something they don't and they mm. don't believe that they could ever have it. That's why they have to destroy you having it. So it has less to do with you being disliked and more that you're unaware of the power that you have. And what would be the message to this newborn that they can use someday? If they come say, after... This is what you do. This is how you counter that. Oh, understand yeah. that it's because you have a power that people are jealous of and mm. they don't know how to develop it mm, or they're too lazy to do it themselves. Yeah. Like everybody wants to be a good golfer. You want to practice like Tiger Woods and you know, like so many times you swing, you've now got back surgery. Yeah. But I mean, everybody wants to look in shape, but are you willing to be in the gym every day at six o'clock and then diet? So people will want what you have work to achieve and they may want to take you down. I think for me, it was very hard. I was an only child. I grew up only with adults. I couldn't really speak to children. My vocabulary was similar in second grade to what I have right now. Mm, and people yeah. didn't know what to yeah. do with me. Yeah. And I, I was on the receiving end of a lot of trying to figure me out. And when they couldn't figure me out, just have to squash it. And I think that you don't realize if they're coming after you, you're onto something good. And look how that all worked out in your favor. <laughs> well, you're, you're a gem. Oh, d thank you. You are. Right? I mean, you know, you, 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 you've learned a lot. I, I love talking to you because, you know, we can continue on and on and on. And this has been a wonderful session. 
Will you come back so we can do this again? Never. I'll never <laughs> come. <laughs> no, I would oh. love to. I feel like I'm having coffee in my kitchen, yeah. and you're my best friend. And here we are. I know. We are good friends. I know. I know. Susan Winter. Thank you. Um, I'm telling you, she is terrific. Uh, <laughs> if people want to reach out to you, someone wants to reach out to you, uh, what's the best way to do that? Go to SusanWinter.net or you know what? Just type in Susan Winter to Google. How this is possible, I'm number one. I don't pay for it. I only recently got attached to SEO. I didn't oh, even good. know what SEO hey. was. I'm like, oh my God, I got a website all these years. It wasn't attached to SEO. <laughs> so yeah. I'm loving it. Susan, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank Congrats you, on all you do. Keep up the good work. Come back again soon, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. She was a great guest and you're a great (laughs) audience. See you next time. Bye.